Hey, hello, good evening everyone. This is Ansh and today we are going to start with our next session on database buffer cache and video log buffer cache. So starting with uh, the memory component that is SGA, we have uh, multiple subcomponents under SGA, this is a memory entity and it is a logical entity also. So in this we have already discussed in past about shared pool and library cache and what and all things that resides in a data dictionary cache. So today moving forward with the database buffer cache. So let's start with it. So database buffer cache, first of all you should know that okay this is a part of SGA component. First of all it is a part of SGA component. If someone will ask you in an interview also you should mention the location first of all where it is present then only you can go and uh, ask them that okay this is the functionality and these are the things that happens in the database buffer cache so it's a part of SGA and now what is the functionality what is the purpose of database buffer cache here it holds the copies of all the data blocks that are being read from the data files what I mean to say this is our database and database is a logical entity and we can say that okay uh, we have some physical entity where data is being residing and in the physical format so under database only there is a physical entity called data file which is also a storage entity which keeps the physical data and in the later sections we will also study about data file in more detail but in earlier section we have uh, came across the block so this is what we call a block and block the by default size of the block is 8 KB, KB and in 8 KB block only we used to keep the data in the physical format. So block is the smallest entity where you can store the data and the default size of the block is 8 KB. You can uh, select 16 KB also 32 KB also depending on the organization to organization what client's requirement is. So as of now, I have seen uh, in 99% of the cases, everyone uses the 8KB default block size. It is very feasible and very easy to use in terms of performance tuning also. So <coughs> this is very, very important thing. So <coughs> in data file, we have a block of 8KB and in this only we will store some physical entity like if someone has select star from EMP where ename equal to king so the information suppose this statement we want to fetch all the records because asterisk mark we have used here so all the information we need to display and if one can say okay there is 16 columns in this so 16 columns information you want to display of a single row of a king it will be present in the physical format somewhere yes it is present in the data file and not in a data file under a smallest entity what we call as a block so it is not that okay in one block we can store all the information about king it can be in multiple blocks also the same information can be uh, contained in the multiple blocks depending on the size of the data which is stored in the single individual rows so if someone is triggering this command and uh, they want to view it so anything if you want to view it will be in the logical aspects Whenever you are triggering a SQL query, you should be viewing anything in the logical entity and that is a memory region and memory region is one of the memory region is called database buffer cache. So the main thing what database buffer cache does, it holds the data block. It holds the data block and this data block, which data block? The query which you are triggering, the information which is residing under the block in the data file. Suppose this is the data block which is present the information of this king and you want it to view it or you want to edit you want to insert update whatever you want to do any dql ddl dml D, dql any operation you want to perform first of all you have to take a copy of this block and you have to place in the database buffer cache so the functionality of database buffer cache is to hold the copies of this data block this data block that is being read from the data file because physically this file is present somewhere else. If you want to view the physical files, you have to take a copy of it and place in the logical entity to view it more accurately. One more thing is here. If you are taking a copy of this block, copies of this block, if there is one block, 
for the uh, particular row information then it will carry a one copy of a block if there is two block it will keep copy uh, two block if there are n number of blocks for a single row information it will carry a n number of blocks and place it in the buffer so as soon as you have triggered this command server process will reach to the data file in search of that information about the data and once it creates a copy of the block and it will move to the database buffer cache and before placing this block in the database buffer cache this block will be considered as a block only but as soon as you place this block in the buffer cache this buffer uh, this block is considered as a buffer now once you place this data block into the database buffer cache to view the information this block is known as buffer in that scenario but if you are copying it from the data uh, data files this block is being considered as a block only until and unless you kept in the buffer so we have different type of uh, buffer also we have clean buffer pinned buffer uh, dirty buffer all that buffer are also present the different type of buffer we will discuss in the later sections but as of now you should be knowing that the database buffer cache is a part of sg is a logical memory component and it holds the copy of all the data blocks that are being read from the data files one more information suppose this query is triggered by user 1 or application one and the same query someone is triggering user two or application two is triggering the same information that means they want to fetch the same information which is pre present in this block so user one can also view the informations if block if buffer is present in this database buffer cache and user two can also share the same block for viewing the details that can uh, make a clear idea that this block can be shared or what we can call as a this database buffer cache can be shared by all concurrent user all the users can use the same buffer if they are in uh, demand if someone has triggered some query if buffer is already present then what we call as a database buffer cache and from that database buffer cache we can get the buffer and we can utilize it depending on the client requirement one more thing is there the concept is what we call as a cache hit and cache miss let me write it down here cache hit and cache miss so in this scenario what happens if the first time an oracle database user process or application users who triggers a particular sets of query what happens if select query is been triggered it has to it has to display some information and the information can be only be displayed when you will copy the data block from the data files and will keep in the database buffer cache once you have kept it in the database buffer cache the block is considered as a buffer now for user 1 now same they now different user is triggering the same command that means they want the same piece of information and the same piece of information is present on the same block and that block is currently present in database buffer cache so we can say it don't have to uh, this user you to uh, don't have to uh, fetch the records from the data files and put it in the buffer that means in this case io buffer is less user io is very less that means you don't have to move to data files in search of blocks and in search of records and you don't have to copy it with the help of the server process and keep in the database buffer cache to display because this buffer is already present here you can make use of it and you can get the information depending on what is the requirement of the user too so if the buffer is already present that means you have get it in the memory only so what we call as a cache hit because you are getting the buffer in the cache itself so whenever first time oracle user process will fire a particular piece of information by select firing a any sql query it searches for the data in the database buffer cache first thing is it will search for the data in the database buffer cache if the process finds that data is already present in the cache that means if buffer is already present in the cache it is called as cache hit what if, if it is not present in the cache so in that scenario your buffer is not present in the database buffer cache you have experienced cached mesh in cached mesh scenario you have to reach to data files once again you have to identify which block has the 
particular piece of data which user 2 wants it will then server process will carry the copy of the block it will place it in the database buffer cache and you will be getting the information in this scenario user io is more because you are moving to storage every time and you are taking the copy and you are placing it in the memory and all that thing is happening multiple times so in that scenario cache miss happens and if you are getting the buffer in the uh, database buffer cache for the first time only then it's a cache hit so it's better to have cache hit to improve the database performance rather than cache miss so accessing the data through a cache hit is faster than, than the data accessing through the cache miss you should be remembering that so if you have the data in the cache um, database buffer cache that means you can get a result and output in the quicker manner rather than copying the block and making it placed into database buffer cache and getting get rid of all the details it will take some time in case of cache miss it will search and go to the storage medium io will be greater so it's better to have a cache hit so in performance tuning you'll be getting how to increase the cache hit and all that thing so as of now i will make you understand one more thing one more statement that this buffer which is present in the cache are managed by a complex algorithm everything the cache hit and cache miss all this concept will be uh, carried forward in with the help of complex algorithm and this algorithm uses the combination of LRU plus touch count. LRU is means of uh, uh, the full form of LRU is least recently used and TC is the touch count. With the help of this complex algorithm, the buffer in the cache is managed. So it's not our responsibility to know how and what are the algorithm that is written in the LRU and touch count. It's better to know the name of the algorithm. With the help of algorithm only, you guys can uh, uh, illustrate that, okay, with this algorithm, database buffer cache, the buffer in the cache is managed. And this cache hit and cache miss, everything will be decided with the help of this complex algorithm, which is the most recently block that has been used. How uh, often uh, the block, how, um, what is the retention period a block can be stored in this uh, database buffer cache how frequently the block can be flushed out from the database buffer cache everything will be explained with the help of this complex and algorithm what we call as a LRU and touch count so this is all about database buffer cache so thank you everyone bye bye take care